Today we meet two new apprentices and they help us raise our roof. And it's DIY time as our homeowners design their kitchen. It's been just over a year since we started two projects here in Charleston, South Carolina. Today we're going to see how they've done. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. See this main roof form? We're just going to pull that forward till it's even where this existing deck is. Definitely says mid-century modern. The money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in cold and snowy Jamestown, Rhode Island, where we are nearly doubling the size of our 1920s bungalow and we are trying to make it a net zero home. Now last time we were here, the crew framed up the first floor of our addition and since then started framing the second floor as well. And here in the main house, there's been some framing going on as well. You can see that we've got a triple LVL for the opening between kitchen and dining room. You can see that we framed up for two new windows that are going to be over a kitchen sink. So a little bit of work here in the main house and a lot of work over there in the addition. And speaking of additions, we've got a few more coming our way. We are continuing our Generation Next initiative this season, where we encourage young people to come into the trades. So we're going to have four new apprentices join us, and two of them get started working today. Mary Smith comes to us from a small town in Mississippi. Through DIY projects and coursework, she's been learning the building trades and wants to be a contractor. Kevin Barker is from Rhode Island. He's worked in the construction industry for a few years. He's learned general framing and carpentry work, and he hopes to focus on finished carpentry. Kevin is local to Jamestown, and Mary flew in just last night from Mississippi. Hey, welcome, guys. Hi. So it's Mary McGuire, the first name, right? Yes, sir. Welcome aboard. Kevin, How's welcome going? Aboard. Nice to meet you. So are you guys excited to uh, be here and to get started? We are. We're yeah. thrilled. It's a little bit of a change of pace, but it's good. Although not a complete change of pace for you, right? I mean, you're Correct. not new to construction. Been doing it for about six years in Southern Rhode Island, so it's a different experience with this old house, though. <laughs> and Mary, relatively new for you, correct? Yes, all of my previous experience has been DIY and new to this professionally, so. Terrific. Hey, Jeff. Kevin. What do you think of your new crew? I love it. I love all right. it. We're ready to go. So what are we doing today? Well, we're in the existing house right now, and the owners really wanted to raise the ceiling. The second floor ceiling was only about seven and a half feet. So we left the original ridge in place and installed a triple LVL beam underneath that ridge. That enabled us to cut the collar ties out and raise the ceiling up uh, mm -hmm. a foot and a half. So we've carried that same structural ridge into the new section, and we're gonna install rafters on top of that. Mary and I are gonna cut and uh, cut all the rafters, and Ryan and Kevin are going to install rafters. All right, you guys ready to get going? We are. Absolutely. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Mary, you ready? Ready. All right, we'll set that on there. You got your mark? All right, Mary, I don't want to slow you down, so keep going, but I do want to hear your story. Um, where in Mississippi are you from? Uh, originally Tupelo, uh, currently live in Pontotoc. <laughs> Which is nearby Tupelo? Yes. Awesome. And uh, what were you doing before you decided to get into this? Previously, I was actually a cake decorator. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Wait, when you say cake, did you work for somebody or was that your own business? I actually owned a bakery. Oh, nice. Yeah. So how do you go from a baker to a contractor? <laughs> I guess really originally I got into it for design. I um, wanted my house to look a certain way and couldn't afford to have someone else do it. So that's how I, you know, started doing things originally. And yep. once I got into it, I really figured out how much I enjoyed it and how rewarding it was to put everything together. So, so now you're with us. Yeah. Um, what are you hoping to get out of it? Where do you hope to end up? Well, so when I made the leap to construction this year, I, uh, was quickly getting a lot of jobs that were kind of over my head, so I'm hoping to come home and be able to take on some more work. You are committed to doing this full time and making a career of it? I am. That is awesome. All right, well, I'll let you get back to it before you get yelled at. All right, 
right, Kevin, I don't want to slow you down either, so uh, don't let me get in your way, but I'm interested to hear your story as well. Um, you've been at it for how long? Uh, roughly six years. Yeah, and so how did you come to the construction? What's your story from, say, high school forward? I, uh, I went to high school um, up in Warwick at Hendrickon. I went to URI following. I left URI and I uh, joined the Marine Corps, and I was uh, in the Marine Corps for six years. I got out of the Marine Corps and I started building houses down in South County. And so in the Corps, six years means you deployed somewhere? Yes, I deployed uh, Jordan in 2010, 2011. Yeah. And then when you came back, uh, why houses? I didn't want to be stuck in an office all day. <laughs> School just wasn't for me. Uh, I was great at it growing up, but uh, I wanted to do something outside and hands on. And, and your hopes for this apprenticeship with us and on this job site, what are they? Soak up as much as I can and uh, build a house together. Right. All right, get out of your way. We are at the point in our project where it is time to start thinking about the kitchen design and coming to a great showroom like this is a perfect place to start. Hey Don, hey Dana. Hi hey Kevin. Kevin. So normally we're the ones introducing the homeowners to a kitchen designer, but in this case you guys are introducing us to yours and that's because this is not your first kitchen design. No, our architectural firm has done literally hundreds of kitchens from very modest to ultra high end. And this is the fourth one that we've done for ourselves, so we have a really good sense of what works and what could be better. Well, that experience is only going to help the process. So what's the big idea? The big idea was to take a bungalow, traditional bungalow, and retain all of the elements in a traditional bungalow, but make it more modern and contemporary. Okay. Well, let's see what you guys have been up to. Okay. Great. Kevin, this is Rob, who's helping us with the design of the Rob. kitchen. Hey, Kevin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, so guys. you've uh, done a rendering for us. I love it. Yeah. So basically, we took Donald's Architecturals and created a rendering so we could get a better sense of the space in uh, 3D with some textures applied. Okay. That's great. It That's does just look great. as we talked about and as we drew. So you've got the, the white uppers and the stove hood. You've got the uh, oak base cabinets mm -hmm. going around with the sink in the distance. The fridge over here surrounded by cabinets uh, in the oak. And uh, he even gave you a view of the water, too. Yeah. That's an upgrade. Only that easy. <laughs> right. our property value. All right. Uh, is this one of the uppers? That is. So there's the uh, painted finish for the upper cabinet. Okay. You've got the styles and the rails and the panels just like a traditional cabinet, but in this case we're bringing it together in a much more flush, crisp, modern way. With, with very crisp lines here. Yeah, sharp shadow lines. Okay. What have we got for the bottom? This is the sample for the base cabinets. You guys called it oak? It's the rift cut white oak, mm -hmm. and it's given a ceruced finish. Whoa, what is that? That is a glazing. So okay. it gives it a subtle whitewashed feel. You can see the remnants of the white. Especially in the corners, a little bit of that glazing left over. Right. So a traditional process where they put it on and then they wipe some of it off? Exactly. So it's a two-step finish, so it really gives that depth and character to the cabinetry, so it kind of upgrades that more furniture look and feel. So that goes on the lowers, which means around the perimeter, and you've got a nice big island in the middle. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Uh, we've got little shoes on your island legs there. What are those? Yeah, so that's a uh, stainless steel bun foot. So essentially taking Donald's inspiration of this uh, farm sink where we have the stainless steel apron to tie in that detail. Uh, I was proposing to do a stainless steel accent there. Mm. Yeah, I just like the idea of bringing some of that stainless into the rest of the room. Um, I feel like it makes the whole thing just feel a little more contemporary. And I felt like it looked a little more rustic without them, so I'm not sure yet that... Yeah, and the good news is we can do that with the uh, screen here. So basically here is the look with our stainless steel boot. Um, and then if we just click mm. that... Mm -hmm. the, boots on, uh, boots off. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, you have an arbitrator here to decide between <laughs> you two if you need one. Sometimes the most important thing you do, Rob, right? That's right. Let's talk about countertop material. Same around the perimeter as on the island as well. Is that what I'm seeing? Yes, we're going to keep it all consistent, and we have a sample here. It's a quartz product. 
and it's got a matte finish in this dove gray, but what we also really liked about it was the white veining right. that runs through that and makes it look more like a real stone right. product. Yeah. I like the fact that it's, again, like everything else, the sort of contemporary version of, of a traditional stone countertop. Right. So quartz is natural, but the countertop is man-made. It does sort of pick up the um, color from both cabinets, right? A little bit of that uh, glaze look through there, as well as the white coming through the marbling, too. Right. That's we right. thought it really brought it together. Right. Super durable, too. Uh, and where are we in terms of layout? Have you got that nailed yet? I think we've got it figured out, but probably the best way to see that is to go to the space and stand there. I'd love to. All right, let's do that. Rob, thank you very much. Great. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Good Thanks, to see Rob. you guys. So originally, the kitchen was sort of against this wall, a little entryway, and the kitchen sink was kind of right where that window is now. Yeah. What are we going to be looking at now? When you walk in, you're going to come by the coat closet, which you can see framed out. There are some cubbies on the opposite part of the mudroom. Mm -hmm. There are some built-in drawers underneath that window, food pantry, and then the powder room is accessed through that doorway right there tucked under the stairs. And A then, lot of activity over there. Mm -hmm. And then main feature right here. So the kitchen, starting where Dan is standing, we've got the refrigerator tucked in, and then the counter turns the corner over here. Yes. And then as you Move along, you've got uh, the counter with that stainless steel sink that we saw before. Right. The, the counter returns again. You've got uppers along that wall, and you're standing right where the stove and the, and the hood will be. Okay. Right here is the center island. Look at that. Um, yes, and at the far end of the center island, you'll have your seating grouping so that you can talk to people in the living room and talk. Basically, this entire space right here exactly. is that island. Space. Yes. Yeah. And you'll just sort of be looking right that way. Right. right. I love it. And the island way. faces the dining room in that area, and it's gonna, this whole room is going to be great. I love it. All right. The original sheathing on this building is just a hodgepodge of materials. Check this out. This is a, probably a 1 by 12 with the square edge down here. It looks like uh, maybe a 1 by 6. That's tongue and groove. And in here, this is beadboard, and I don't know what the strap hinge. That could have been a cabinet door. I mean, they just used whatever they had. And so for Jeff, you're going to have to contend with the sheathing on the old building. But first, it looks like you're going to have to contend with some rot. Wow. Yeah. So if you remember, there was a concrete stoop right here that serviced this back door. And over the years, the water just came into the inside of that stoop and you know, rotted this sill beam. Oh, it sure right did. Out. So, so this, uh, you've got to cut. This is coming out? Yep, yep. We're going to cut. We're going to take this section right out. Just give that a little start. Right there. Oh yeah, she's loose. Okay. And we're going to replace this with a pressure treated beam, which Kevin and Mary are going to come in here with. I got this one. I got it. All right. So PT for the new one, just yep. slide it right in. Well, we're going to put a bead of expandable foam in. Oh, nice. So you're making a little air seal between foundation and sill? Yeah, because there'll be you know imperfections in this uh, concrete here, we would normally use sill seal here, but we're not going to be able to wedge that sill seal in. OK. OK, now we're going to put this. Let me go in first, Mary. Okay, go ahead. Pretty nice fit right there. So you've got a, a lat joint right here. Another one's going to continue when you take out this part. Yeah, of it. we got to keep going. So we'll, uh, you know, we can only lift so much of the house up at a time. Right. And then we'll fit that next piece in. Beautiful. Okay. So then we're just going to lag it in. Just going to drive a lag right down in there. And that's going to hold that in place. Nice. Nice. So Jeff, what is your um, plan for the sheathing right here? I mean, sometimes in the past we've stripped it off, sometimes we've just left it and put the siding right to it. What's your plan? So we got two issues going on. We've got all these voids 
in you know miscellaneous sections and when we do our spray foam insulation we need a backer on the outside right. to capture that the other thing is that we really don't have much rack strength with the way the boards are applied now so we're going to fill in we, we replaced some some other rotted wood here we're going to fill in with one by stock to make up to catch up to the existing one by yeah and then we're going to oversheathe the entire thing with 716th OSB. That's going to give us that that boundary for the spray foam, and it's also going to give us that rack strength that Perfect. we're looking for. All right, well, it looks like your crew is standing by, ready to go. Let's get to it. All right. Our next cut is going to be a rip. We want the factory side up. It's been just over a year since we started two projects here in Charleston, South Carolina. We finished the single house first and that really came out great. We hired an army of craftspeople to get this one done on time. The second house was in much worse shape. The owner, Judith, used to visit the home when her grandparents lived there. But for 11 years, the house was abandoned. Well, Judith and her partner decided to restore the family home and today we're going to see how they've done. And look at it now, Tommy. That is an unbelievable transformation. Sure is. So the porches had to come off, but they've been rebuilt beautifully with the columns and the railings, and all the siding has been uh, replaced or fixed. Yeah, and new windows and new paint. Let's have a look inside. All right. Hey, hey welcome. How are you? Thank How are you. you? Nice Good to, to see, see you. you. See you too. Guava. You stay in Ghana. Welcome. Guava. That's yes. terrific. Thank you. Beautiful on the outside. I'm Thank dying to see the inside. Yeah, you got to. It's yeah, wonderful. Too. And I want to see the wow. whole thing. What do you say we split up, Tommy? All right. I'll take the upstairs. Julia's upstairs. She can show you around. All right. Show me around the first floor. Thank you. What a difference, huh? Kevin. Hey, Julia. Good to see you. Same here. You must be very excited after a long year and a lot of work. This has been an incredible amount of work, but the transformation is amazing. It certainly is. Please, come on through. Let's see. The uh, upstairs bedroom, right, with a little bit of history, didn't it? Judith actually slept here with her brother and her two sisters, and I'm sure you remember the oh. holes in the rooftop, the holes in the floor. You could see the sky, and the vines were growing through the roof mm -hmm. into the room. It was a disaster. Absolutely, but this is a transformation. How so will you use the space? We're going to use this as our a sanctuary, essentially. Ordinarily, you would have a, a master suite. This is a mistress suite. So please, come and take a look. Okay. You can see Judith here in this photograph as a baby. That's terrific. Right. We've got exposed brick here for the uh, fireplace. Which Disabled it for wood, but you guys have added back gas, which is nice. Yep. Also, take a look at the pieces of African art that Judith has bought from Charleston. We've got a beautiful chair here. We've got stools scattered around, artwork as well. Makes it feel a lot more like home, doesn't it? Very much so. Please also take a look at our writing room. This is where we'll spend some time working here. Awesome. All right. This is our bed. Yeah. This reminds me of Bermuda. It's got that sort of island feel, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Also the ceiling fans. That is great. So another reason to make it feel like home for mm -hmm. you. Yes. And, and then master bath. This is my happy place. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yes, definitely. Please look at the arches there. Double They're arch. absolutely wonderful. High ceilings, glass door, and lots of light coming through a high window and a mm -hmm. window on the far wall. That's right. Look at this tub, Kevin. Isn't that amazing? See yourself soaking in that on a weekend? Very much so. Sipping a mimosa, hopefully. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Please come through and take a look at the best feature, the porch. Okay. Whew. Listen to the sound of the cicadas up in the trees. Sounds of Charleston. Yep, look at this. Now we can see ourselves spending the Sunday mornings here drinking our coffee. This is probably the biggest transformation. The back of the house was a disaster. A full third of it had to come off and be rebuilt, but you guys added porches that were never here. Two stories. Exactly, it's wonderful. This ought to be your happy place. <laughs> Wow, Judas, what a difference, huh? Thank you very much. It's nice and open and bright. We got brand new windows, we lightened up the floor, and of course, we widened this doorway. Well, by widening this doorway, I mean, it gives a sense of a whole new size for this space. There was a little doorway That's here, right. removing this, big difference, and you're also celebrating the hallway, too. It's beautiful, the wood, and in fact, you know, we love old things, including that fireplace. We stripped it, though, 
You pointed the bricks, got rid of the mantle, made it more modern. I like that touch. It looks nice. Thank you. And look at the pocket doors. We kept those. I like the height of the pocket doors. They're great. Same thing with this fireplace. Mm -hmm. And then we just opened up the entire dining room, which wasn't a dining room before, you may remember. Yeah. There was a bathroom here. Right. And this used to be the kitchen. Yeah. Oh, At, yeah. The kitchen was right over here. Absolutely. Now it's a mother-in-law suite. We're hoping my mother comes often. And uh, we made this really for her, light and bright and airy. It's a great tweet. You have a big bathroom right there, too far. And especially for her, the piazza and the garden. We made a magical space for her. Yeah, this is a big piazza. My mother loves gardens. We go all over the world in search of beautiful things and gardens. And this one's for her. You'll see her wrought iron table and chairs. We have uh, all kinds of color, including the red. Yeah. Bit of a surprise. Yeah, and it's a beautiful wall. And I love the hole in the wall. Nice touch. And this is our kitchen, the soul of our house. And it's beautiful. What was your inspiration for the kitchen? We wanted a really big island. Well, you have that. Industrial sink and faucet. You got that too. Quartz countertops. Quartz countertops. And you have a waterfall edge on each side that runs all the way down to the floor. And I notice you pick a different color for the island. Bermuda blue. A lot of storage in this we kitchen. Do, because Julia loves everything hidden away, clean all and right. simple. Nice, and what's the uh, idea of this right Double here? Double spice racks, baby. Whoa, <laughs> spicy food. Yeah. Julia heard her name and she came running. Didn't want to miss a party. <laughs> she heard the food. <laughs> so we're here a year later, maybe a bit longer than everyone expected, but we're here and finished, and you're back in the family homestead. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? It feels amazing. It is a beautiful home. I'm proud and honored to bring you here, mm -hmm. share thank it you. with you. And grateful for all the people who helped us. You had quite a good bunch of people helping you, and we've got to thank them as well. well Lindsay, we've got uh, Bridges and Jeff, um, our general contractors. We thank you very much. We have Brian and Andrew as well. All the local help that helped us navigate mm -hmm. Charleston, get us through this, and you guys stuck with it to the bitter end, so we appreciate that. Thank you very much. And you all ready for a party? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Well, we were going to go to a party. <laughs> but next week, we're going to be back in Jamestown, Rhode Island. So for all of us here, signing off for the last time in Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Kevin O'Connor for This Old House, and it's time for a wrap party. on this old house. So uh, this is the design team, huh? mother and daughter. How does that work? My mom's an interior designer, and she's got great taste, and she's always my sounding board. So she's here helping to make these really important decisions. And to me, it's like jewelry for the home. Absolutely. And we're going to show you an energy efficient way to expose these rafter tails. OK, now come to me. That's next time on This Old House.